So I'm just going to use this caries detection die, which you know, in a way I never used to use routinely, but now I use this quite a lot. I think this is a really, really good way of uh, noticing if there's any decay, but the, the likelihood of perforation is decreased slower, but it is of course not uh, removed entirely. Slow motion here, you can see the drop in just goes past up to that 22 millimeter mark. Hello, welcome to this week's uh, Friday clinical case. And uh, this is a case of um, feeling that very, very fascinating uh, drop that you're feeling when you are really struggling to get to length on a tooth and um, you're, you're struggling and you're being frustrated and, and the file just drops to length and you get zero on your apex locator. A very, very satisfying feeling. This is also essentially about uh, quite a calcified tooth and all the sort of management techniques that I'm going to show you how to manage these sorts of uh, these cases. But before we get on with the case, what I do want to say that over 50% of the people who watch these videos are non-subscribers. So if I could ask you to do one thing for me, it's easy, it's quick, and also it's free. It's just to hit that subscribe button. It supports the channel, and I promise if you hit that subscribe button each week, each video will get better, and the educational value of the channel will uh, will improve also. And if you want to increase uh, your support for the channel, we've got a membership program on YouTube. The membership program um, has early access to content and also has exclusive content. We've got an amazing endodontic access video on there for you. So this is a case of a uh, lower left five. Uh, this was an external referral and this uh, patient was referred to me by a, a very, very uh, good friend of mine and um, they had uh, tried to access this tooth and found that they couldn't find the uh, the canal orifice and quite rightly they didn't carry on they felt that the scope of practice was at, at the limit and they uh, decided to have this referred before they perforate the tooth and when we look at the tooth we can see that the tooth has been accessed to a certain degree, but we can see there's a little bit of a canal space in the coronal third of this tooth. And the dentist, essentially, what they need to do is just go a little bit further. But the problem with these cases, as I've mentioned, is that if your instruments or your fast handpiece or whatever that you're using is um, is is orientated in the wrong way, then there's a severe risk of perforation in this case. Another thing to mention um, with this X-ray here is that the uh, the canal space isn't obvious in the mid to apical third so this is a slight red flag for me this is you know is is, is this just the orientation to the x-ray or it, does this mean there's a deep split in the tooth or is it quite calcified and we can't really know until we get inside the tooth we could also take a cone beam ct scan in this case but i think in the main um, a cone beam ct scan is taken as a last resource essentially so i was happy just to open up the tooth and uh, and 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 you know, treat as we see the clinical situation uh, presents itself. But the, 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 the fact that we could take a cone beam CT scan at a later date is always in the back of our mind. So we move over to the video. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to remove all the fills. You know, sometimes we look at teeth and the, and, the, and the composite filling is nice and solid or it's just been placed by the referring dentist. But in this case, you know, I look at the x-ray and I feel like everything needs to be removed. Also, what, what you can do is, is when you remove all the de uh, de filling and you get rid of all the decay, um, you can sort of assess the pulp chamber uh, a little bit better. And then I'm going to um, apply the rubber dam once I've removed all the, uh, all the filling. And in this case, um, rather than placing uh, the, the, the filling uh, straight away, I'm happy that the rubber dam has, um, has, has sealed up the tooth nicely and I'm just going to assess the tooth for decay. And in this case, I'm going to use a just a simple rose head and a slow hand piece and I feel like this decay or this apparent decay is pretty solid so I'm worried slightly that I'm removing sound tooth tissue so I'm just going to use this caries detection die which you know in a way I never used to use routinely but now I use this quite a lot I think this is a really really good way of uh, noticing if there's any decay but and when we look at the tooth we can see here that the vast majority of this uh, decay has been uh, removed and the thing that looks dark is just affected dentin. so I'm not going to remove that so we're just going to tidy up the uh, the cavity ever so slightly and then i am going to use my ultrasonic endodontic tips here to uh, assess and try to look for the the canal orifice and these ultrasonic tips are fantastic because we get to visualize where
where the instrument is going and also it's a very very small and judicious use of uh, removal of dentin in this case so uh, the, the the likelihood of perforation is decreased slower but it is of course not uh, removed entirely and overall i'm just going to follow the kind of line of the pump chamber um as as we as we see it here and we've just got to be super super careful about our orientation because of course the crown looks quite large but as the tooth um, reaches the apex, it gets narrower and narrower, and, and even the smallest amount of off-axis removal of dentin can result in a perforation uh, eventually. But I'm just having a very, very slow kind of removal of all the dentin, and then as we uh, just touch the, uh, the the orifice here, we feel that kind of breach. And even for just for a half a second, if I get a tiny breach, I am worried about uh, a perforation. But in this case, I feel like that it's in the center of the tooth and, um, and and I'm pretty happy that I haven't really pushed these ultrasonic tips too far down. Um, I, um, I'm, I've not perforated, I'm within the canal space. What I do do here though, is I open up the coronal third with uh, my um, with my master apical file. Okay, so you'll notice now that it's quite open. Straight away, I am gonna irrigate, I'm gonna make sure that the, uh, the, the sodium hypochlorite is activating and getting rid of all that bacteria. Area. And then once we um, straight away, I hook up my uh, size 10 K, K file. I'm having a little bit of a negotiation here and I'm getting resistance and I'm not quite reaching all the way to the end. And the worst thing for me to do now is to really push down on this ham file. I am going to just uh, adjust the stopper to the point at which where I have reached um, uh, the, the furthest point reached. I'm going to obviously pull this ham file out and I'm going to measure how far we've reached. And in this case, we've reached to 20.5. So in this case, I feel like I'm pretty close because 20.5 is, um, you know, within the acceptable range of the working length of these types of teeth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape um, the, 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 the canal space up to 20.5 um, with a glide path file. And then I'm going to move up to a, a higher diameter file up to 20 um, millimeters. Meters. And as you know, if you're a common viewer of my videos, you see that I like to open up the canal space further up. And this releases the grip of the file onto the ham files we're using to negotiate. And then I am using a size uh, uh, 10K file and um, I'm getting closer here, but I'm not actually quite getting past uh, the zero reading because that's what I want. And as we have another measurement here, we can see that we are, we've, we've reached a little bit further, but we're still not at zero. So I'm gonna prep a size eight uh, D finder here. So um, I, I'm just gonna measure it at a certain length, a little bit further away. We're gonna just cut off the stopper here so I know at what point the bend that I'm placing in this in this file is, uh, it's got its orientation. So if I do get to length, on this uh, tooth at some point, I know at which orientation the bend is. So I'm just gonna very, very gently place the size eight uh, defined to length, and I'm still getting a little bit of resistance, and I'll hook up the apex locate, and I am still short. So um, what happens when you place a bend in a ham file and you place it in the canal space, it can uh, sort of shape the bend out. So I'm just gonna um, put another tiny bend in this in this uh, D finder and I'm gonna do a little bit more negotiation. So I'll have a little bit of feel around. I'm not pushing this anymore. And I have reached zero in this case, but I haven't been able to push this out the end. But we're, we're very negotiating, we're slowly, slowly negotiating. We see here we've got up to 21.5 millimeters. So again, I'm going to do that sort of step back approach where I'm going to use a glide path file 0.5 millimeters away from the furthest point reach, which is 21 uh, millimeters. And in this case, I'm going to use a tooth saver method where I'm going to use uh, a rotation of 400 forwards and 50 backwards. And this is kind of a reciprocation motion. And I'm going to place this glide path file at the furthest point reached off, and I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to sweep it out. And I'm going to use an 1802 tooth saver file. So before I used a 1403. And I'm going to use the same technique where I'm going to place it to length off and then sweep it outwards as I turn it on. And I'm going to just going to set my size six ham file here. I'm going to see if this gets the length. It doesn't get to length. 
And um, with a size six is what I like to do is I like to do it without a bend first, see if it gets to length, and then I place a bend in the size six. And again, um, I'm not quite reaching the end. And obviously when we use these ham files, the bend gets straightened out. So I've just got to be very, very gentle, very, very perseverant, and making a little um, bend at the end. I'm still not quite getting zero. So I, I, I need to kind of not lose my patience in this case. I'm gonna go back to a size eight. I'm going to prep this at 22 millimeters, so it's a little bit further than the furthest point reached. So I know if I do drop in, I know that I've reached past the point where I've I've reached. I'm going to uh, make a quite an acute bend in this ham file now, and and you know I'm just ever ever so slightly just having a watch wind and a feel around with this ham file, and I'm not really pushing it down at all. I'm just wanting the file to sort of push its own way, and as we can see here now, we see that kind of drop looks beautiful then just a slow motion here you can see the drop in just goes past up to that 22 millimeter mark and then finally to just show the point here very very slowly it drops in so that's why we we adjust the stopper to past the furthest point reach because we know as it drops in and um, we know that we've got past and we can see now the apex locator reading is a past zero and then we're going to just very very gently push this uh, size 8 d finder uh, backwards until we reach the zero point and now we know that way we've got our uh, our, our um, zero reading uh, our correct zero reading which is 21.5 millimeters so I'm going to prepare a size 10k file up to 22 millimeters intentionally because I just want to kind of shape past uh, that and I'm going to make sure that the, the file is patent. Of course, I'm really concerned about damaging the periodontal tissues, so just be very, very careful when you're doing this, especially if you're doing this in a in a, in a tooth where there's uh, important anatomy. We're going to do a quick uh, working length check. We can see now that we've got that patency with this ham file, and I'm just having a little feel around. I'm just shaping out that uh, uh, last half a millimeter at the apical end, and then we're going to use our glide path file at zero. And what I would say is, if you're using this glide path file and it's not getting to length, don't push it any further. Just make sure you keep we keep recapitulating with your ham files, and then we're going to do uh, use our master apical file at 0.5 millimeters away from the zero reading. And in this case, I'm I'm slightly concerned about uh, patency, so I'm going to use this master apical file in T mode, and this is kind of a a watch winding motion where I'm going to make sure the master apical file pushes past up to the point where we want to get to. And once we get there, we press another button and it creates this rotary action. And uh, make sure you recapitulate and also you're going to uh, irrigate lots. And we can see now that it's nicely shaped. And I'm not going to go further than a size 20. You know, the, the, the end of this tooth um, was quite tight. And I feel like if I use a, a higher diameter file, say a size 25, this is probably going to ledge the tooth, block it, and cause empty space not to be obturated. Well, then we're then going to uh, uh, obturate the tooth and we're going to do our cone fit radiograph first. In this case, I'm using these maximum diameter cones. So these are a 2004 with a maximum diameter of one millimeter. I'm going to just make sure the ends are actually 20 millimeters. And you can see here, despite them being 20 millimeters, they're not. So I'm just going to make sure the end is properly 20 millimeters. And um, when I sort of very, very slowly push this GP cone to length, I'll notice the point, point where it's crimped as we just annotated here, it's not quite reaching our reference point, which is the, the, the buccal cusp of this tooth. And what I could do is I could just obturate to this point and say, oh, it'll be fine. But I am a perfectionist. And also, it's not in the patient's best interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove the cone. I'm just going to just confirm here that I am actually short. I'm not to the working length, because sometimes that can be um, uh, something that, that, that you, you mess up and you don't get quite correct. And the, the, the best thing for us to do here is just to reshape the tooth. It's not to obturate straight away. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a more of an arrogant. I'm going to get my size 20 uh, high flex file. I'm going to just, again, always rechecking everything. We're going um, to uh, reshape it, and then we're going to get a new cone. And um, you can see here that these cones are quite friable and can be bent quite easily. So again, I'm going to uh, prepare another crone, uh, cone. And as we sort of 
give a little bend at the end and I have a little fiddle around here. We can see here now that this cone uh, fits uh, fits nicely to length. So I'm, I'm happy that this cone is fitting at the correct uh, working length. And when we take our X-ray, we can see here now that it's, uh, you know, at the working length and it looks pretty nice. And we're ready essentially to do our final. But something I do notice with this uh, cone fit radiograph is that we've got possibly the suggestion that a, um, a file has fractured. So is this just a very, very small, thin, thriable part of the GP cone, or is this genuinely a, uh, a, a, a broken file? So what I do do is, um, when I'm ready for our observation, I am gonna just clean away my tray table. But what you notice here is I'm just checking all of the ham files to see if they're all at the correct length, and they are. So we've confirmed there that the, uh, the, 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 all the files are, are, are perfectly to length and that kind of weird looking apical sort of um, uh, radio opacity is the GP cone and not, and not the ham file. So once we've prepped the tray table, we've got rid of all the dirty instruments, give it all clean up, we're ready to do our final um, obturation. Um, and uh, we're doing, ready to do our final irrigation protocol. As we pull this uh, GP cone out, I'm just gonna have a little tiny look at the end. It's not bent. Uh, you know, it, it looks like that that's gone all the way to the end. So I'm happy that that's ready to be obturated level uh, later on. We're gonna place our GP cone in some disinfection. Notice there's a ham file in there that's ready for later to place the bioceramic to length. And then we're gonna do our final irrigation protocol, which is sodium hypochlorite, ultrasonic activated. We're gonna use 70% uh, 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 EDTA, ultrasonic activated. And then we're gonna use our sodium hypochlorite. Again, that's gonna be ultrasonic activated. And then we're gonna dry the, um, the, the canal space. We're then ready to um, uh, prepare our cones. So we're gonna get uh, the obturation, the sealer loaded. We're going to uh, clean and dry our uh, ham file and also we're gonna clean and dry our GP cone. But what I'm concerned about in this case is that I may need to make a little bend in the end of this GP cone to make sure that um, it fits nicely to the, to the working length. So I'm gonna make a very, very small bend in this GP cone, and then to freeze this in place, to make sure it stays in place, I'm going to use some endofrost. Now, you know, the uh, eagle-eyed viewers out there might say, well, you've prepared this cone, you've given it all a clean up with a sodium hypochlorite, and now you're using endofrost. I'm happy that the endofrost isn't dirty, and I'm happy that, um, you know, the, the this is gonna create a, a decent seal for our obturation. So we're gonna place our bioceramic here, we're gonna use our um, disinfected hand file to introduce the bioceramic to the working length, and I'm gonna very, very, very gently push this GP cone to length. And a lot of the times, if it's bent at a certain place and the bend is uh, fitting in the wrong place, what will happen is you'll notice as you push it to length, the GP cone sort of moves into position. And if it doesn't, you might need to use your finger just to move the bend into position. Then we're going to remove the excess um, GP. And then essentially the tooth has been obturated. You just need to push it down with some Mac 2 pluggers and then um, give it a bit of a clean up push it down, make sure the GP cone's pushed really fun, uh, uh, hard to length. And then um, in this case, I'm gonna use Vitribon just to seal off the orifice. Um, you know, I will be placing a core in this tooth, but our referring dentist is gonna remove the core and place their own and uh, and place a crown on top. So I like to use this Vitribon in these Acidose tips. So these are tips that can be manually loaded with whatever material you like. You place like a, like a rubber stopper in the end, and then this just goes into a normal composite gun. And this gives you you perfect um, uh, uh, control over how to place uh, GP um, over the orifice. So if anything happens to our uh, core or whatever, then this uh, vitribond is sealed off the end of the root canal. It's less likely to cause leakage. And when we look at the, uh, the, the final obturation, it looks fantastic. You know, we've got a really, really um, uh, conservative prep, the root canal and the obturation is full to the working length. And... Um, very, very happy result. 
Overall, thank you for watching. It's a nice short and sweet uh, uh, case today. Pretty straightforward, but lots of learning uh, um, uh, points here. Again, please like and subscribe and also comment below if uh, you feel like anything you, I would have, should have done is wrong or you got any tips. I learn so much with this channel. Again, join the membership program if you want early access to content and exclusive content. And I will see you in the next video next week. Bye-bye.